I would like to show us the nine ministries of the believer. There are nine dimensions of ministry that we can call the believer's ministry. It is unto this ministry that the fivefold ministry gifts are expected to build capacity in us so that we can prosecute. Now, as we go on, are you still following what I'm talking about? As we go on, I would like you to evaluate your life. If your life is striking any chord with heaven. Now, there were three things I believe I shared with you just now. That is um, a brief explanation of this scripture that I read. Number one, what did I say? The, the basic, the basic uh, function of the fivefold ministry gifts to the body of Christ is that of capacity building. The reason why it is so is because your call into the fivefold ministry offices affords you accelerated grace. This accelerated grace, what I mean by that is there is a, a greater likelihood for you to grow faster in God because you have access to the grace of that office. That is what creates the potential difference in the knowledge of Christ and puts you in a position where you can build capacity. Are you there? Oh, you're not there. Now, if you have been in the work of the labor of discipleship and you have seen people that gave their life to Christ come for training, and you have done that again and again, you will notice a pattern that there are certain people that the moment they hit the ground, their growth is on another level entirely. Now, it's not as if God is partial, and it's not necessarily because they are putting more effort than the other people. It's just that they have access to a certain kind of grace. That grace accelerates their growth. If you meet them after one year, where you will find them. <laughs> so is that grace, it's a proof that that person has an entrance into the economy of the fivefold ministry offices. And as the person matures and understands the dynamics of grace in that corridor, the person will be released into this equipment kind of ministry. And this equipment kind of ministry entails um, bequeathing the same grace through his spoken ministry to the members of the body of Christ so that they can receive the same kind of strength that the Lord made available to him in order for him in order for them to operate on the same frequency that is operating so this thing that we are talking about in terms of capacity building runs on the economy of the grace of God are you there? Now, I, I want to take it step by step so that each and every one of us will understand as we build gradually. I trust that God will help with the much needed utterance. Uh, the number four in that sequence is that you cannot serve God without a gift. I know you desire to serve God, you desire to do great things for God, but the way the kingdom of God is structured, you will need enablement to be able to satisfy the requirements of service according to the estimate of the kingdom. For instance, the Bible says, seeing that we have received a kingdom that cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably. It is grace that gives us the capacity to be able to serve God acceptably. Now, when we talk about Christian service, one of the things that must be uppermost on our hearts is whether or not 
our efforts in service are acceptable. And because these days we no longer do quality control, we no longer check with God to see if what you preached, if he was pleased about it. We no longer check with God to see if what you are doing, God's hand is upon it. We just do stuff and force God to accept it. It doesn't happen that way. Now, according to the scriptures, you will need grace in order to furnish such service that is acceptable by the reason of the estimation of the kingdom of God. You will discover in that scripture, therefore, that you cannot serve God outside of the empowerment of a gift that God himself provides. In view of the above, I want to take you to the book of Romans chapter 12. Romans Romans chapter 12 Okay All right so let us begin our reading from verse number 4 Romans chapter 12 verse 4 for as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office so we've been many and one body in Christ and everyone members of one another then it means that I belong to you and you belong to me now uh, are you are you following it's not the principle that is being revealed here which is the principles that governs our oneness some of the things that God put in place in order for me not to be able to be successfully isolated is that he put some of my requirements in Gideon put some of his requirements in me put some of my requirements in Theophilus because the principle that will govern the strengthening of the body of Christ is the principle of interdependence interdependence this principle of interdependence and this system that God has put in place wherein that which I need is with another person and that which another person needs is with me is actually designed to cancel out the possibility of competition the reason is because we are not the same are you there we are not the same so if I am different from dr. Joshua now there is no way I can compare myself with him because there's no ground common ground of comparison because we are different so this difference was put in place because God has the capacity to manage difference. The devil doesn't have the capacity to manage difference. So he puts um, unbelievers, they're either fornicators. So he deals with fornicators as one group. Then we have um, drunks. He deals with them as the, the same symptoms find expression in their community. But for God, God has enough administrative resources to sustain you as an individual in the light of your uniqueness. This arrangement has made it impossible for competition to thrive because if I want to compete with Dr. Joshua, it means I will have to forfeit what he has to give me. And in the best of my capacity, in the best of my prayer, in the best of my intentions, I will not be able to maximize my full potential. So we have this principle of interdependence. And Paul was trying to unveil it to us by saying that we are members one of another. You see, 
Are you still following what I'm talking about here? Once upon a time, if I mount a crusade platform to minister, the moment I mount the platform, the grace will lift from my head. Until I met an evangelist. He finished ministry and he spoke by the word of the Lord that God spoke to him while he was preparing for this meeting that he should pray for me. So this evangelist now prayed for me. From that moment henceforth, if I stand on the crusade ground, the grace is even stronger than the one I have now. Um, hallelujah. Amen. There is a possibility that I would have continued that way if I did not receive strength from him. It's not as if we are saying receive strength from everybody. No. The, 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 the concept and the context in this presentation, uh, it's uh, the kind of concept that is in the biological medium. Um, so many cells aggregate together, such cells that have similar function, they aggregate together to form a tissue. That's what we call cellular association. The cells that are of the of ears don't need to think of sight anymore. The ears can depend on our own function to provide sight. Why the ears can now focus on their own function to provide hearing. So it is not every cell that you draw from directly in that organic situation. That's why you can listen to a preacher and in your own eyes, he is making noise. You just, and it is true. He is not within the ecosystem of cellular association that you find yourself. Are you, are you following what I'm talking about? And so we are not saying go to the street and be looking for strength because you will not find it. You will find it within a certain ecosystem that God has created and domiciled you. Like in my own little, my ecosystem is little. I found men like Gideon, I found men like Jangfa and Theophilus. In fact, the moment he began to minister, the anointing just dropped. And he it, it, it does that a lot. Many times I pray for so many hours and the anointing doesn't drop. But I sit on his ministration for three minutes Because God put something about my own completion. So that's the idea of... As you begin to grow in the things of God, you begin to find, understand that we're created in bunches. And um, when you find your bunch, you will stick. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So the Bible says that we are members one of another. And no matter how hard you try, listen to me, no matter how hard you try, if where you are trying to stick is not your bunch, that bunch will cause you problems. Yeah, I know this experientially. I know this experientially. A certain preacher that claimed that God had revealed me to him as a destiny support and the moment I got there and he was saying that I lost my peace but I had to manage the situation the situation was such that a lot of managing was required I managed that situation to my own detriment that's end of story I don't want to explain so that even if the person is hearing you will not know that and you will never know the person but I'm using this example to give you strength any time, you know, God was telling me expressly that, hey, this one is not in your bunch. He, he, he can operate somewhere else. Maybe he's a fingernail. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So, but he's not in your bunch. What you withdraw from him will be pain and anguish. So, but I wanted to be diplomatic. They are, they are, you don't need to be diplomatic. You are, <laughs> hallelujah. 
So I have been bruised with many sorrows, as you are seeing me now, just because of that unaligned association that is not organic in scope. So the Bible says that we are members one of another. Are you there? All right, so from verse 6, that's where my emphasis will come from. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us. Having gifts, having gifts. These gifts that we are talking about are gifts that are powered by the unique lines of grace that God has given unto us. So when you were born again, you were not born again empty. What God did to you is that he gave you grace. You see, because grace is spiritual capital, it will take you some time to recognize the grace that is at work on your life. Now, I have been into discipleship for many years. I've discovered that as we begin to train believers, new believers, we find that there are some of them that have this capacity to pray much more than the rest. It is a, an indication of the fact that there is a grace along that line. The service that you are going to bring to the body of Christ is in the area of the grace that you have found that is functional upon your life. Uh, that's the reason why, even though I like what Theophilus does, I cannot do it because I don't have the grace. So there is a gift that I have, but this gift is powered by grace. It's as a result of a certain unique stream of grace that is functional upon my life. And I need to take time to find out what kind of grace is upon my life. I was teaching the other day and trying to explain to the brethren how that even though we are in Christ, we are not the same, we are different. And one of the areas in which we are different is the area of grace. Because the gift that we have is occasioned by the grace that we have received from Christ. Are you there? It's not as if we can't sing. We can, but you see, when you sing, what happens when Theophilus is ministering will not happen. It's not likely to happen. That is a proof of the fact that there is no grace on your singing. So you need to look for another department. I know a lady that likes singing. She likes it. She even learned how to use the guitar. But if she is singing, you will sleep because there's actually, I don't know how to manage her to tell her that there's no grace on. You need to go and look for, may the Lord give you understanding. Find out which grace as it deposited. I don't have time to take you to the book of Romans, chapter 5. I would have shown you in the equation, in Paul's, in Paul's judicial and organic explanation of the economy that wrought our salvation. I think I need to show you that. Let's just go, hey. Wow. We can't see it because the time has let me just explain it. Can we see it? Yes. All right. I, I, just, I found a scripture that I will need to share with us. We'll come back to Romans chapter 12. So let's do Romans chapter 5 so that I can explain something that Apostle Paul says. Okay. Can we do 
Romans chapter 5, verse 17. I want to read something to us. Just to shorten the reading, the reading was supposed to start from verse 12 to verse 17, but because of time, I just want to do verse 17, which is supposed to be the conclusion of the reading. From, if you begin reading from verse 12, it captures the entire ecosystem um, from whence this truth is derived. And truth does not exist in a vacuum. But because we don't have sufficient time, I want to go directly to my verse of interest. It says, for if by one man's offense, talking about Adam, death reigned by one, is a much more. What's the meaning of much more? Huh? Much more. What's the meaning of much more? In a greater. So it means that the grace that God released to undo the import of the offense, which is the original sin that Adam committed, the grace that was released, was much more than that which was needed to undo the effect of that sin. Which is, it was much more than that which was required to actualize your salvation. It was a superfluous release of grace that God made available. Because he was not only trying to accomplish salvation in you, there are other things he wants to accomplish. And the antidote for the salvation and the other things is grace. So what he did is that he made a location for what the Bible calls the abundance of grace. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more there which have received what? The abundance of grace. So the grace we received, the moment we gave our lives to Christ, was much more than what was needed to undo our state of sinfulness, our fallen state, and to bring us into a realm where we have grace available after our salvation. This grace that is available is supposed to equip you for ministry. Are you there? But because grace is spiritual capital, it will take you time to know the type of grace that is upon your life. For me, the moment I gave my life to Christ, I saw that I had grace to teach. So I have developed it a little to what is operational today, and I'm hoping to yet develop it much more because if you feed the area of grace that you have received from God, you are going to go high. But if I'm feeding another area that I don't have grace, uh, and I am not strategic about my, my intentions, if you notice that there is grace, then you begin to develop that aspect of grace, then the grace now enters into higher levels of excellence. And, and maybe God can even use you as a vessel to touch the entire world. So the issue of the economy of grace is critical. And we have seen that what God did is that he bequeathed to us grace that was more abundant than that which was needed just to save us. Because he wanted us to have spiritual currency to prosecute service. Do you get that? All right, so let's go back to Romans chapter 12 quickly. Romans chapter 12. Are you there? All right. Verse 6. Having then grace differing according to the grace which is given unto us, the first service that he mentions here is prophecy. Prophecy. And it will interest you to know that prophecy here is different from prophecy 
as a gift of the Spirit. Are you there? And I'm going to explain prophecy as a gift of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and prophecy in this context. Now, um, I know we all know that prophets, uh, the gifts of the Spirit are broken into three categories. The first is the inspirational gifts. Some scholars call it the vocal gifts, but uh, I have a problem with that because the gift is not just about talking. The gift also entails receiving. And if you are a Bible student, there are two ways that God speaks. He either speaks by inspiration or by revelation. And the difference between inspiration and revelation is one word, remembrance. If God is bringing to your remembrance the things that he has told you before, are you there? That's the activity of the Holy Spirit to um, make you have access to the present revelation position of the Spirit. You see, if there is a problem now and I want to solve it, and I don't know how to solve it, and I reach out to God and ask him for help. Are you there? And then what God now reveals that is a pro solution to that problem happens to be something that I know, but I did not know that that was the solution. Even though I know the thing, there was no way I would have known that that is a solution to this problem if the Holy Spirit did not give me inspiration. In inspiration, God brings to your remembrance things that you know. In revelation, God takes you beyond what you know. And this is the, these are the two ways in which God speaks. And one of the gifts is built on inspiration. One of the category of gifts is built on inspiration. And the other category of gifts is built on revelation while another category of gifts is built on power. So I believe it is theologically more accurate to call them inspirational gifts. Now, prophecy. The gift of prophecy as an inspirational gift finds expression when... Um, okay, give us one scripture there quickly on the screen. Um, Exodus chapter 7 verse 1 quickly give us that scripture quickly quickly and the Lord said unto Moses see I have made unto thee I have made thee a God to Pharaoh and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet are you there? So if you see this scripture very well, you'll discover that the idea of a prophet is a mouthpiece. A mouthpiece. So when we talk about prophecy, either as a gift of the Spirit or as this one I want to explain to us, what you are going to become is a mouthpiece. God is going to seize, use your vocal cord to communicate what is upon his heart. Are you there with me? It will use, it will seize your vocal cord. It will take over your vocal cord and use your vocal cord to communicate his words, not your words. So that's what prophecy is about, basically. Now, since the gift of the Spirit called prophecy is an inspirational gift, it has this nature. If I'm operating under the gift of prophecy, what God makes available to me is an allocation of inspiration. And as long as that inspiration is operational, I will begin to speak what I am being inspired to speak. In that gift of prophecy, it is spontaneous. I cannot receive the inspiration now and decide to speak later. I am caught up in that instant of inspiration to become his vocal cord, to become his mouthpiece, and as he's inspiring me, I am saying exactly what 
he is saying. That's the gift of the Spirit called prophecy. But this dimension of prophecy that is in this list, are you there? It's a bit different. In this dimension of prophecy that is on this list, I can receive what is on the mind of God, maybe about Gideon. And then I know that I'm going to see Gideon next week. So it is when I see him next week that I now tell him what I received. Can you see the difference? Now, every believer has this gift. The ability to receive from God and to communicate what God has said. Every believer has this dimension of gift. Um, where was I? I was in I was in Ghana. And one of my friends in the US, I was not even praying, I just sat down and then I received something about that guy and I was not thinking about it. Tell him to be careful not to push his wife to the wall because he is likely to lose his marriage. So I just made a WhatsApp message out of it and I sent to him. Guess what he said first? He said, did my wife talk to you? Well, what I wanted to ask him, I wanted to ask, answer by a question, does your wife have my number? <laughs> but I, I had to spare him all of them, those details. I said, your wife didn't talk to me. He now said, hmm. <laughs> then a long story now came out of that discussion. Do you know that there was a possibility of that marriage breaking if that word did not come and this is are you there first line of the ministry of the believer my question to you is this when last did you receive a word of God that you for a believer for a brother for a sister for 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 my friend Gideon for his wife when last did you receive that now, there are many reasons why believers may not function in this line of ministry. And for Jeremiah, who happens to be a prophet that was called to speak, Jeremiah is a good case study for us to learn and understand speaking for God. Because his major duty was that he was called as God's spokesman. Are you there? The reason for which Jeremiah was going to be discouraged from speaking when God began to disclose to him that his ministry entails speaking was because he felt he was a child. And there are so many reasons. I don't know your own reason because you have not been speaking. For Jeremiah, the reason why he didn't want to speak was that he claimed he was a child. There is always a reason why people believe that they cannot be God's spokesman. And meanwhile, this is a legitimate ministry in the body of Christ that is supposed to become one of the avenues of strength that we will have in the body. But unfortunately, the body of Christ is not functioning according to these streams of ministry that I want to bring to our notice. And part of what I am trusting that we'll be able to achieve during the course of this conference is to activate those lifelines of ministry. Imagine I was in public service. I was in public service and uh, I was beginning to sense that it's time to leave, it's time to leave, but I didn't know what time it was to leave. And uh, God spoke to my friend in a dream that it, it was two years more. Two years more. I think you shared, yeah, so he shared that with me. Are you following? And um, we forgot about it. He shared it with me, we forgot about it. And then when the two years now arrived, it, I was on my own now, and I, I, I sensed it was time. Then I now told him, ah, 
Have you forgotten that I told you that in two years' time? So it was a confirmation to me. I went somewhere again, and somebody prophesied that it's four years. I knew he was lying. <laughs> now, names with help, names, but may the Lord give you understanding. They, are you there? The person we are talking about is a major prophet. But I knew he was wrong. And he was so wrong. I, so I allowed him to speak and I honored him and left. But that's not so important. Because I forgot about what he told me. I had my own encounter independent of what he said. It was when I told him that he reminded me, ah, the thing just clicked. So it is actually very difficult for you to miss your way as a Christian if you are around people that God can use like this. There are many things people need to confirm, who to marry, what job to take? Am I supposed to travel to the UK, to move to the UK? So many on a daily basis. And there's so much room for ministry along this level. But you see, the believers have not been equipped. In fact, the believers don't believe that they are supposed to be in ministry. And so these outlets of strength have not been maximized. And that's the reason why on various matters we have different views. Because the kind of strength that is supposed to be flowing from different quarters is not available. And many of us, your walk with God is like a journey in the wilderness. You are just isolated and you are just... Somebody sent me a message just now before we got to this place. How he was depressed because he believes that God is hiding his face from him. That was how I got confirmation that this is a message for me to preach. Yeah, I was, what I wanted to preach, oh Jesus. But when that, I was just looking for any sign. The guy said he's depressed, that he's been fasting since January, and God has not shown up, and there are issues, financial issues, and all kinds of stuff. You know why the guy is in that state? There is somebody that is supposed to exercise this ministry to bring him strength, and the person has shut down the economy of that street. So in the body of Christ, you will find that the average believer is not equipped for ministry. So Satan wins the day. Satan overwhelms the lives of men just because they needed strength, that strategic strength that is supposed to come to put the person in a good posture for him to follow through the season and arrive at God's terminus for him. He doesn't have the capacity to do it. He's already confused. Confusion sets in. Anxiety begins to set in. All kinds of stuff begins to set in. And many times we miss our way just because there was a strength that was supposed to come that was not available. Now I need to show you something quickly here before I begin to round up. Show you something quickly before I begin to round up. So according to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 24 and 31, can you give me 1 Corinthians 14, 24? 1 Corinthians 14, 24. But if all prophesy, and they come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all. Give me 31. For ye may all prophesy one by one. This is how I know that that is not an inspirational prophecy. Because I, can, I, I should allow Gideon prophesy, then me too. So if we are in control of the time of delivery, it means that what is operating there is not inspiration. Because if the gift of prophecy hits junk fire, maybe in a service while we are praying and it begins, began to utter the counsel of the Lord, under that inspiration, are you there? It's kind of 
spontaneous. But in this arrangement, they say we should prophesy one by one. And the Bible says, for ye may all prophesy. That means every member of the body of Christ has this dimension. But the point is this. Most of us have not, de the fact that you have a grace doesn't make the grace effective until it's de developed. Just like we develop ourselves in the teaching ministry, and today we make a little sense when we open the scriptures. It's deliberate. We have been, we have been plowing into it, plowing into it for years, for ages, for decades. We've been investing in it. So today, it seems we are making some sense. When you listen to us, the, it has meaning. It's, it's not just grace. The grace is what enabled us to even labor. It's because there is grace that we are laboring so that the full scope of the excellency of that investment can be made manifest. So if you don't labor along the lines of a certain grace that you have received, it will not manifest. So the Bible is saying that each and every one of us has the grace to receive from God and to speak the mind of God. But we don't seem to be a prophetic people that can bring the counsel of God to someone else because the average believer is not developing this capacity. So we have, we have a deficiency, a shortfall of strength. Where was, where was it? It was in Botswana. So I was given the platform to minister. And uh, it was so strong on my heart. I tried to, to escape it, but it was too strong. That there's a woman that had a miscarriage. And she's been weeping. This is the first church service she's attending after the miscarriage. Because she... she Everything about God just felt. So, and that was the first church service she was attending after the miscarriage. And then the Lord now, if you know how, how willing God is to quicken his voice so that everyone will know that they are not in the wilderness, they are not alone. So that Satan will not defeat the, be the best of us through mind bending and anxiety. So I picked it. And I said, no. God said I should tell you that uh, you are going to conceive again and this, 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 that. I don't know all the details again. Now, the woman thought that the pastor told me. So after the service, the woman went to the pastor and said, Pastor, did you tell this man about my condition? So the pastor told her, I fear God too much. To, be, to do this kind of thing you are saying. That was when she now felt loved. Because even though I gave the word, she came out, she felt it was a discussion. When she confirmed it from the pastor that he had no hand in it, that was when she felt that, oh, so God is aware of my, and then the whole depression was broken. Do you know how many depressed people in Joss would have just come out of depression just because you were able to receive something from God. Receive something from God. Receive something from God. When last did you do that? So I have noticed that there's a shortfall, there's a serious service shortfall in the body of Christ because of lack of equipping. Now, let me, let me press for that. Hey. Mm. So let me read some things on my note. I said in my note that this is different from the gift of the Spirit called prophecy. Number two, it is also different from the office of the prophet. Then the Bible says such prophecy should be according to the proportion of faith. So because it is according to the proportion of faith, it can be developed. So I'm going to show you how to develop. Are you there? 
Oh, you are not there. You are not following. It can be developed because this kind of delivery is according to the proportion of faith. What I mean by this is when you receive a word like this, there is a knowing you have inside of your heart that it is from God. So when you are speaking what you are speaking, only speak that which the knowing covers. If you speak beyond what the knowing has covered, you will be lying. And the thing about vocal expressions of the mind of God is this. If you want to be trusted in the manifestation of vocal expressions of the counsel of God, make sure you only say what God is saying. If, you, if it is known that you say what God is saying only, you, that the body of Christ will trust you. Are you following? Yes. Now, I, I, I know you know that the reason why we have a ministry, the reason why my brother Gideon has a ministry is because the reason why you are here is because you trust us that what we are going to say during the course of this conference is what God is saying. Because you have followed us for a while, judged us with night prayer. As you are listening, you are praying the night to pick whether the frequency is from. You have judged us with fasting. You have sent the messages to some trusted people to check. This, this voice, this. you did all of that. And then you came to a point where you could trust us. Do you realize that ministry thrives on trust. It's very fragile. It thrives on trust. The moment you no longer trust me, God will need to call someone to do my assignment because I, I can no longer bring ministry to you. Trust. As fragile. That's, that's what marriage is based on. Trust. So I've lived with my wife for a long time and she trusts me. So she released me one day. Say, I know you have a traveling ministry. You're a good man. Don't worry. Go. I'll pray. I'll pray for you. She knows that I will not go there and look upon another damsel. She has gathered, arrived at that over time. It was not there initially. Trust. So she can release me. So ministry is trust based because it is trust based be careful don't attempt anything that you are not sure of there is a faith that it comes with when you receive a word from god it's part of the systems god puts in place in terms of your internal discernment faculty you will know there is a knowing that that faculty will project about what you have received when you are delivering it, just deliver what you are sure that the knowing covers. In that way, you'll be able to develop a reputation of trust because it will be correct. Meanwhile, if you are learning, sometimes you will miss. Not because you wanted to deceive people, but because you were immature. Don't be ashamed of that. But a time comes when we don't expect you to miss. A time comes in the administration of your grace. We don't. If you miss at that level, we will begin to think you have, there's something wrong with your life. It's just like me now. I wake up one day and I start teaching hyper grace that you can fornicate, you can do this. Uh -uh. <laughs> you will now say, you will know something is wrong with my life. That's <laughs> As you grow in it, you are supposed to become stronger, more sharper. Your sword pierces deeper and not otherwise. If we notice that you are depleting in strength, we will know you have gone somewhere. May you not go somewhere in the name of Jesus. Are you there? Now, so it's according to the proportion, the measure of faith, the proportion of faith, so you can develop it. So we'll do a practical session if um, my brother will allow me. Um, because I think I'm out of time. Okay.
All right, so. According to the scriptures we read from 1 Corinthians 14, every believer can function in it. 1 Corinthians 14, 24, and 31, every believer can operate in it. In fact, one of the, thank God we, already, we have a venue of our own now. I think we need to celebrate the Lord for that. One of the things we can achieve, which, which we could not achieve before, now that we have a place, is the drill that it takes to pick. We can hold meetings, prayer meetings for seven hours. If you want to hear God, the foundation of hearing God is priesthood, is prayer. The, the major assignment of a prophet is intercession. It is, if it's up to date in intercession, session, he can be up to date in picking the mind of God. As long as he stops interceding, he will no longer be accurate. Are you there? So, intercession is a lifestyle that puts your heart in a condition where if God needs to communicate to somebody, he can use you as a vessel. Are you there? Finally, I need to show you two things. And the things I need to show you is from the life of Jeremiah. Huh? No. If we do that, my practical time will be exhausted. So, I think I may have another session. We'll continue from here. And then we'll, there are nine gifts, nine ministries that the believers should be doing. The body of Christ is actually in a deficit right now of those dimensions of gifts, those dimensions of services. One of them is speaking for God. Believers don't know what it means to speak for God again. Agapos came to see Paul and he did a prophetic sign and said, they are going to bind you like this. But Paul already knew that his ministry was rigged with binding and affliction. Are you there? So the fact that the man said they were going to bind him was not new. It just meant that he was on the part of his calling. When you bring the counsel of God to someone, the meaning you think it has may not be the meaning that it has consistent with the dealings that God has been giving the person. So you deliver your own and go. Don't deliver expecting the person to say you are accurate. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you are God's mouthpiece. We are supposed to do a lecture, a teaching on the life of Jeremiah because Jeremiah is the declarative prophet. So you see the dealings that God gave him so that he can declare the counsel of God. So we'll look at that maybe in another session. Are you there? Yeah, so he's the declarative prophet. We are different kinds of prophets. Elisha was revelatory. Um... Joseph was administrative. He saw what was coming and he had the wisdom from God to be able to build an administration to swallow it up. And people like Jeremiah are declarative, declarative. And there are five different kinds of prophets based on the limit of my own study of the Bible. Five different kinds. So we are going to consult with Jeremiah because he is the prophet that was the mouthpiece of God. And there are several dealings that God gave him in order for him to be accurate in that line of service delivery. Now, I'm going to stop my lecture here so that we can have some time to check the realm of the Spirit to see if God is speaking. So while I prayed before I came here, I did not ask God to speak to me. The reason why I did not is because I want to ask him here as practical. So what I, what I might be, I'm not 100% sure that I will pick something. But what I might be saying, we, is, I'm just saying it's, it's going to be coming here directly. Not that I labored, secured it, and then I'm hiding. Then when I want, I'll now say, no, I have nothing. Nothing on me. So we'll just see for 15 minutes, 
we'll see what and, 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 and hey, you are getting it wrong what you think i am saying is that i will pray and we will pray then me i will be picking no see the bible says that ye may all prophesy ye may what all prophesy so we'll pray in tongues for two minutes three minutes four minutes then we'll stop then we'll see how many people have picked and then you know the one thing about prophecy is that it must be judged so when you stand up to speak we are here we are here to <laughs> we, are, we are here to judge it <laughs> we are here to judge it. but but that should not scare you but that's the security that is built around the administration of prophets that's what the bible says congregationally we should be able to judge it is that clear so we are here we are seasoned ministers of the gospel that can probe into the responses correct you um encourage you as the case may be okay so we'll take 50 oh shh. you see we're already climbing yeah <laughs> Ancoria brahaskite brendo compe babanla haskito braminaite. Go briska fadekun de hees cabron de babalis govro hondali. Minglo brosecasico brento compe la manse cadula maca.